Hey everyone, welcome back to The Rocketeer. Today I want to show you how to make a one inch nozzle for a PVC motor. In a previous video a couple years ago, I made up this template to form the nozzles out of just some plywood and some wooden pegs. This has served me well for a couple of years, but now it's time to update the video, the process, and this time I am using a 3D printed part. So this will form the convergent and the divergent it's in two pieces and there's just still the same two washers that I used previously that work pretty well. Anyways, I, I don't have a 3D printer, but a friend of mine does. You can sometimes find them at a local maker space or even the library. Sometimes we'll have one available or just a friend. Just buy them some pizza and you'll be in business. Anyways, we'll take a look at the parts that are necessary in the process and let's just go ahead and get started. This is a short length of three quarter inch PVC pipe. It is one inch long. This is our one inch PVC nozzle base. And what I do is I butter up the inside with my favorite glue, this PVC glue here, Gorilla Glue. It doesn't require any primer. It's just one shot and done. I sand a small chamfer on the end of my PVC piece here that's three quarter inch pipe. I put the two together and then I force them together in a vise. And what that does is it, it really makes a snug fit into the nozzle. Uh, previously, I used to slit this nozzle with a bandsaw, but I did find that uh, occasionally that the exhaust gas would creep past that. And uh, that's something you want to avoid because as soon as the exhaust gas finds a way out, it just blow torches everything and it just kind of ruins your day. So I found that this force fit works really well. It's best to use a vise and you get it nice and straight in there and it just pulls it right through. Uh, don't waste any time doing it though because the glue does set up really fast. Once you have this base piece in there, that supports the washers. And the washers will sit right on top of that like this. Uh, I think you can see that there. So. Once the base piece is inserted, what I do is I drill a quarter inch hole through both pieces and that will form a concrete pin that will provide additional support for the nozzle so it doesn't blow the concrete out. I drill that through both sides and put a piece of tape over the holes like this and cut a slit in it. And what that does is it allows air to escape so that the pins are fully formed. If you don't cut the slit, then it kind of airlocks and you get a bubble in there and the pins don't come all the way through. So when it's done right, you should see a little bit of concrete weeping out of that hole right there. Now, one side effect of forcing the base piece into here is that it does slightly expand the base. And so you have to uh, sand it off just a little bit so that the... 3D printed form will fit on there because it is slightly expanded from forcing the two together. But that's okay. It just takes a minute. It's really simple to do. Now our form is ready to go and I'll mix up the rockite and I'll show you that in the next picture here. Mix up the concrete and I bring it up to the top of this right here where the washer sits and then um, I'll insert the washers and then I'll fill the rest of it with concrete. So let's take a look at the type of concrete I use and why I use it. Before we start assembling everything, we want to check the diameter of the quarter inch fender washer. This is a 930 seconds. If it passes through there, then I know it'll work. This is a 3 16 fender washer and if you use that in this 9 inch motor, it will cato. So I always check the diameter of the nozzles, uh, washers, to make sure that they are the right size because small differences in the diameter of the washer make large differences in the pressure in the motor. So make sure you check everything. You don't want that in there to mess up your project. The next thing I'll do is I'll take my cooking spray. Uh, this is just like a canola oil blend of some sort. And I'm going to spray them on my parts as a mold release. And I've got the piece of cardboard down here because it's a little messy. I'll spray that on and get everything ready to go. And then I'll talk about the Rockite. This is what the Rockite expansion cement looks like. It's uh, the same as hydraulic cement. It expands slightly as it cures. And I prefer this brand because some of the others I have tried 
are very coarse. And so this particular brand will give me a nice smooth nozzle. It's easy to work with, sets up fast. It's fine like flour and I, it just really works well for me. So from now on, I'll be using this. Okay, I have the cooking spray on there, the mold release. I'm going to go ahead and mix up the rockite to the consistency of pancake batter and uh, start pouring it into our molds. Now it's time to pour our material in up to the base piece where the washer sits on. Then take each washer and push it down in. Take a small piece of half inch pipe, force it down in there. Then you should see some of the concrete come up above the washer. The washer is stamped, so I like to place the uh, smooth side down. This side's slightly rough. I like to place the smooth side down. There we go. We can see the concrete is above. And go ahead and fill it up. Fill it up most of the way. After the concrete is fairly close to the top, then I push the convergent cone in and it should squeeze out, that's okay. Depending on the temperature that you cast the concrete at, it could take five to 10 minutes for it to set up till it's firm, it varies. You don't really wanna leave it till it's hard to pull the form out of it, but you can see right here that some of the concrete is weeping out of that hole just a little bit and that means that the pin will be fully formed when, it, when I pull these pieces apart. So that's, that's what I'm looking for. I will keep an eye on the concrete that's in the cup and that'll tell me when the nozzles are starting to set up and firm up good. And once they're fairly firm, I'll pull them apart. It's been about 15 minutes in my cool basement, so I think they're about ready to go. I have some water in a cup and a Q-tip so that I can smooth out any uh, concrete that's rough or not where I want it to be. I'll go ahead and take these apart. Gently pull it apart. There we go. Pull the base out. There. Now it can use some smoothing up, but that looks pretty good. That's a good start there. And the base looks well. The nozzle. So you can take a Q-tip with some water on it and smooth it out any place that it's rough. Make sure that the washer is clear that you can see all the way through it, see the metal around it so that it doesn't constrict the washer. And if you want to spend a little time smoothing it out, just take a little bit of water and a Q-tip, smooth it out like that. You don't really want a lot of water on it, just enough to wipe it around. This isn't really necessary because as soon as the heat hits it, it will uh, melt some of that concrete away. But anyways, that gives you a pretty good idea what it looks like. Just go ahead and finish them up. If you pull the pieces out and it's not quite set up enough, just push it back in and wait another five minutes. Try not to disturb the piece until it's ready to be worked on uh, because it just takes it longer to set up. I'll go ahead and pull the next one out and pull the tape off and we'll take a look. The nozzles turned out really nice. You can see they're nice and smooth. I use a Q-tip on it just a little bit. And uh, after they have set for a couple of days, then you can mount them in the coupler like this. Make sure the divergence down. Of course, you'll want to glue that in. I like to use the vise on that too. It just gets it straight and pushes it in. And uh, then you can glue the coupler onto your PVC motor. And there you have it. You have a nice concrete nozzle, easy to make. And uh, they're quite durable. I've been happy with the performance of them. Some of the concrete will melt, that's just part of it. The concrete that's on the convergent helps to keep the washer from becoming superheated because if it gets really hot, it'll just melt to the side of the plastic. So that really helps to bring the exhaust gases in and keep the metal washers, there are two of them, uh, nice and cool, at least so they don't overheat. And the divergent helps uh, increase the thrust Anyways, there you have it. Uh, that's how they look.